This is a quick training and awareness video just to show a little bit about how Server123 data can be used in different applications. In this case, I've got an operations dashboard that was configured by the FEMA GIS team and allows me to see real-time data coming into, into the map. So you can see the symbols using the, uh, the standard symbology on the map, but we can also see metrics based off of what I'm looking at. Now, dashboards can be configured in a variety of ways, and this was how it was set up for, for this particular incident. So you can see a count uh, based on waypoint type at the bottom, but as more data is collected, you might want to see it by specific views like damage assessment, human interactions, related support data, or even a breakdown by task force. One of the new categories in the survey this year is community lifelines, and you'll be able to see how that data gets broken down uh, based on the types of data that's collected. You can also do things in dashboards like set up uh, date filters or team filters or even target in on specific waypoint types. So a dashboard is a really great passive tool for watching real-time data come in. And the more you use it, the more you'll get comfortable with it. And it's really important to provide feedback to the person who configures your dashboard so they can make improvements. It's, it's very customizable and there's a lot that you can do with it. A dashboard to me is great for an operations section or, or other audience that just needs to monitor um, information as it comes in. The Survey123 results page is a page that gets set up automatically when you publish a survey. And for me, I think this is a great tool for an audience like a playing section chief or someone on an incident support team who actually needs to begin to dig into the data and do some analysis. When this is properly shared with you, you can see the total number of records, number of participants, and even a quick timeline of <clears throat> data collection as it comes in. The analysis tab, this is something that is uh, already set up for you, although you can go in and customize the visibility um, for just the fields that you're interested in based on the survey. From this analysis tab, the whole point is that I can see a quick breakdown by each of the fields in my survey or each of the questions. So we can see here a breakdown of the teams, the types of waypoints that are being collected, which includes a short tally below it. And uh, depending on the type of question, you'll see different uh, ways the data is represented, like word clouds, etc. We can also generate a variety of different charts and take screenshots of these for reports. And here I'm just showing the structure type for the damage assessment that actually matches the FEMA PDA categories. So this isn't so much about a map, although you can make a quick map. It's really about understanding uh, the data itself and doing some analysis. I can configure this by setting <clears throat> date filters. I can filter on maybe particular teams or particular questions I'm interested in. And when I'm done, I can print a current view. So uh, remember, as soon as you print this, it's out of date because it's not real-time data. But for reporting and documentation, this is a really useful tool. Next, I'd like to show you the data tab. Now the data tab is probably more interesting to people who are actually looking to integrate with other systems. Um, for instance, we can take this data out, we can filter by team, and we can export in a variety of formats. Now the same rules apply. As soon as you export the data, it's out of date, right? It's no longer connected to the service. But if you wanted to maybe just take this out quickly into ArcGIS or make a quick Excel spreadsheet and maybe your own graphs, or even if you want to take this into other software like Google Earth to just quickly see a KML of what's been covered, you can do that right here from the uh, data tab. The other, uh, the other useful feature here is I can click on individual um, entries and get more information all the way down to uh, if there's a photo taken, the direction the photo was taken. Um, don't see any good examples here, but this is just, you know, more detail and I can even print that out too. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes with Survey123 that you may not have seen. Um, and, and also uh, operations dashboards very heavily used in this space. So it's important to get, uh, become more aware of, of what the capabilities are. The last thing I wanted to show you was uh, within Survey123, there's actually a photo gallery, which can be very useful during a large scale disaster because we can actually go in and look for photos that um, perhaps show the most damage, or perhaps we want to follow up on a particular item like this, this building. I can click on it, and I'll get all the information that's available um, 
from that particular camera. In this case, it looks like a, a pretty high tech camera was used and this was just attached to the point. But if a camera, um, if a smartphone camera is used, you'll get additional information like, uh, for instance, this bag of meatballs and marinara sauce, but also the location of the photo, the type of uh, phone that was used, and in some cases, even the direction of the photo. And if I need to, I can download this for further inquiry. So this is just a general overview and, and an unscripted demo just to give you an idea of what's possible. I would look for more training from either the FEMA or IFC staff um, supported by a NAPSIG foundation in the future. I'll go ahead and add this, uh, this video to your training playlist, and you'll be able to access it from the rest of the training materials. Thank you.